Want to find out what's going on in your community? El Observador is San Jose's bilingual weekly newspaper. Go to your local newsstand and pick up your free copy today. Looking for the training and skills you need to get a new career? Call Center for Training and Careers today. That's CTC at 408-213-0961 and start building your new career today. Wapili Rose Amador and this is Native Voice TV. I want to start off by reminding you about the ARP campaign, The Divided We Fail, and you need to log on to aarp.org and what you're doing is you're telling millions of other people that you will support candidates that will give you action, answers, and accountability on health care and lifetime financial security. So we need to elect leaders who will represent us and who will end the gridlock in Washington. So please help us support those who are looking out for our best interests. Um, something else is coming up in the community. You know the holidays are upon us and uh, I don't know how they got here so fast, but if you wanna buy some native crafts, um, jewelry and other kind of items, um, salsa, soap, all kinds of native gifts. You can go to the Native TANF offices on First and Empire, and that will be December 5th through the 8th from 1 to 5 p.m. You can call Callie at 280-2280, and she can give you more information, but they'll have a lot of great things for the holidays, so you might want to go by there and pick up a few things for your family and support native people and native crafts. And also keep Floyd Red Crow Westerman in your prayers. He's been very, very ill. He's been in a coma, so let's pray for him and hopefully he'll be back with us soon um, in the community. Last week you had some wonderful guests on and we ran out of time. We had so much information. We asked them to come back again this week. So again, I'd like to welcome back Anita Tatia. Ta 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 Mm -hmm. And Richard Gonzalez, welcome to both of you again. You. And uh, we just had so much last week, we just touched the surface. Now tell us about the tribe you represent. We uh, are members of the Lipan Apache Band of Texas. Uh, we have our, our administrative offices in Edinburgh, Texas. And also uh, because we have so many people living here, uh, mostly within the region around Fresno and even up here in the Bay Area, about half of our enrolled uh, people live in this area, migrated over here, you know, over the years. Kind of you know, stayed as a community, though. You know, last week we talked a little bit about your family history, and we're surrounded by so many colorful items here, and we didn't even get to touch on them. So I'd like to at least start off with maybe going around, and you can explain to us what we're surrounded by, and maybe you can start with this... Item sure. right here. Well, let me start with my wife first and her name, Taktiye. <laughs> and just to offer you, uh, Taktiye is, is uh, Apache for uh, hummingbird. hummingbird. And this is probably oh, the only beautiful. time you'll, you'll actually see her sitting down, uh, <laughs> which is what, why I named her that. She's a very busy and powerful person Active as far as... Active in the community. And I notice you're wearing a lot of jewelry. Well, the Apache women are known women of uh, many necklaces. And uh, it, not only myself, because I read about it, but I've always liked necklaces. Um, my sisters, uh, uh, other Lipan Apache members, uh, we've gone to visit them and even wear necklaces where they're doing their yard. <laughs> so have we have it. always, for history, know, be known as women of many necklaces. Oh, well, that's beautiful. Yeah. Okay, well, right, right behind her, uh, on, over her left shoulder, is, is, is the, our Eagle Staff. That's our staff. Um, it uh, has all the... I, I went and harvested the, out of a cedar up in the mountains, and traditionally it, they were made from cedar. Uh, it, uh, it's, it has a, uh, at the tip a metal point 
mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, representative of the Lipan Apache's uh, use of metal. We're the first uh, North American uh, Indian tribes to actually use metal because of the, uh, the Spanish influence. Mm -hmm. So that, that, rep that uh, commemorates them. Also, the, the, the leather there is all buffalo hide. Uh, there's also four uh, different uh, pieces of uh, red uh, cloth there to represent the four directions, uh, circle of life, and, and also the, uh, the beads there at the top are, are uh, mountain laurel seeds from the Texas mountain laurel tree. There's four of them there, and every, everything is, is uh, separated into four to represent mm -hmm. that circle of life. Uh, the, uh, you see uh, uh, streams of, uh, uh, of the horse hair there mm -hmm. that represent also the Lipan Apache's use of the horses after the Spaniard influence here. Um, uh, we've uh, spoken with many other uh, Indian tribes in the Southwest, and they... Uh, it, it's just been a blessing to, to be there, not because of anything that I've ever done, but the honor and the respect they hold for our ancestors mm -hmm. of the passing of the horses to them. Uh, uh, a, lot of, a lot of things, uh, use of the metal, uh, and there was a lot of things too, but that is, uh, anyway, that, that is, uh, and then there's some other symbols here at the bottom. Uh, they're also the symbols that we use on our, on our, fl uh, our flag, which is just immediately next to that. Uh, those symbols are representative of the different places in Texas. Uh, a lot of the, uh, the Apaches travel at night while you see the North Star there to be used as a uh, uh, guiding star. Uh, also, of course, the moon because of the night travel. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the sun symbol there with five rays of light. Uh, the four directions and also the, that fifth uh, 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 ray is the longer version uh, or the ray coming up the center of the sun, which is the Lipan Apache, will be back again uh, as a nation. Oh, wow, There's also symbolic. below that uh, three um, arrows. The arrows have uh, fletches only on one side, and that's to represent the three rivers that the Lipan Apaches uh, that, that were taken as prisoners, the three rivers that they crossed, the, uh, the Sabine, the Red River, and Rio Grande, uh, to uh, some because they were captured and some to avoid capture. Wow. And anyway, it, it has a lot of uh, other yeah, symbols that are symbolic. sacred to the, to the Lipan Apache. It, next to it is our flag, and the flag has uh, the same symbols yeah. uh, or similar symbols on it. You get that? That is, uh, Ende is, is uh, at the bottom there. Mm -hmm. That's the people. That's the Apache uh, wor uh, word for uh, Apache, yeah, and there, the people. The people. Uh, we we're, uh, belong to, in the sub-tribes there, there's Kualkajen Ende, that's uh, Lipan Apache. Uh, mm. I notice the staffs are very different from a lot of the, or most of the Plains ones that I've seen yes. in the past. W e each are made, w you know, from, by their, uh, whoever owns them, uh -huh. uh, the warrior that, that actually made them. Uh, the s there's a shorter one there, that's our family staff. Uh, mm -hmm. That is, uh, you see uh, a lot of similarities there, but there's a, a white cross with a blue outline on it, uh, kind of in the middle there. Mm -hmm. That uh, it, it represents a lot. As, as a little we little bit this way. did a lot of research dur uh, during uh, the last years, many years actually, w we found a lot of, uh, we've gone to the museums in Austin and uh, San Antonio, a lot of the different places in Texas where there are a lot of historical uh, sites, uh, museums at forts, a lot of articles that they, ha they still keep there uh, had belonged to our people. And a lot of those uh, items are kind of generic. They're, that's just something they use for, for uh, some particular purpose. But within a lot of those, uh, like staffs like that, and, and moccasins, uh, different items that uh, each family used, they actually put symbols on it to indicate what particular family you belong within that mm -hmm. ba band or tribe uh, of Indians. That Blue Cross uh, was uh, indicated in many things uh, with a Castro family, which is what uh, my grandparents and great-grandparents have descended through. They were uh, a chiefs in, in uh, Lipan Apache chiefs in Texas. Uh, so you'll see that symbol, and you'll see them on my moccasins and some of the other articles that we'll, we'll show you here in a little bit. Next to it, I, I, I... Now, this I, is a POW MIA flag. That's, that's a, right? a recent, of course, flag. And 
I, I, pl I placed that flag there because uh, a lot of our people were taken as prisoners of war and also killed fighting for their freedoms. And uh, to, to honor them, uh, I placed that flag there. It's, it's a newer flag, uh, more created probably after Vietnam. But a lot of our people were taken as prisoners of war to the, to the reservations. Uh, we visited them in, in, uh, in Oklahoma and uh, New Mexico. And that's just a few of them. There's so many. And they, uh, anyway, that's to honor some of those ancestors that, that have suffered in that way. And going around the table here, there's a, there's a drum uh, sitting on the uh, table over here. That's a peyote drum. Um, during uh, uh, years years ago, and that's that's a um, uh, cast iron kettle. Uh, people use for cooking mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Uh, well, the uh, Lipan Apaches uh, cooked as well too in their own ways. But when they came across those kettles, they cut off the handles and figured this would make a nice drum. And, uh, <laughs> So a lot of people refer to them as water drums also. Is it, I was going to say, is it, is it a water drum? Water drums, it water drums, yeah. And put rocks, four rocks in there, uh -huh. water in there, and you'll see a lot of mescaleros uh, dancing, uh, their, um, the Ghana dancers uh, dancing with the peyote drums. There's seven rocks around uh, holding the, the oh, rope, yes, holding uh -huh. the, the leather down for and the drum effect. That's where it's tied right here. Yes. Uh, so that... that uh, as a lot of uh, a lot of the influences are, are uh, come from uh, the Lipan Apache, which is called, uh, commonly referred to as a peyote drum, which is, comes from actually Mexico, and mm -hmm. the, the Lipan Apache were credited for spreading the medicine into a lot of the other uh, Southern Plains tribes. Uh, also, uh, right here in front of me is is uh, we we've uh, looked at uh, magazines or not magazines but books uh, that are uh, they have a lot of historical uh, items in them. Uh, artifacts that were taken during uh, the Indian Wars mm -hmm. from a lot of different tribes. And this particular one, I just finished it last week. It, uh, uh, I saw it in there, and it's, it is described in this particular book. It's kind of a museum type of book. It has a lot of articles in there. As this particular, same designs, everything's the same. The fringe along the sides here, uh, everything's the same except for the, the blue crosses I've, I've added you know, for our family. As, being t as one being taken, of course, the one in the picture was was taken on May 19th, 1873, at Rey Molina uh, in Mexico. Well, that particular location is actually Re El Remolino in Mexico. It's a Lipan and uh, village uh, 40 miles west of uh, Eagle Pass, Texas, in Mexico. The Lipan Apache had gone in there, and I, last week I, I explained to you the story about my great grandmother yes. surviving that raid. So this particular item, I just duplicated it and, and made, it in, uh, 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 made it myself. Mm, so uh, anyway, that, that, that's, there's another one up here that's, uh, that, that, that's just something that I made. Um, so I didn't really duplicate Did anything. Did we get but this one? I added the four feathers, but it's, a, it's along the sim similar style as this other one with the fringe along the sides. That's uh, uh, Lipan Apache style. Beautiful. During uh, the 1800s, when uh, the uh, Apaches would would uh, travel across the desert, a lot of the travel was done at night. So they would take you know knives and medicine and a little bit of food, different articles, and, and put them in these bags and throw them over the shoulders. And uh, the Apache actually preferred, even though they had horses, preferred being on foot. Uh, they were quieter, smaller, and they worked in smaller uh, groups. As a lot of the Indian tribes. Uh, migrated or traveled in large groups, and the Apaches would travel in very small groups. Uh, they used a cover of darkness and, and surprise. But anyway, this was uh, some of the articles, or not the articles, but these were some of the things they used for carrying uh, some of the things they needed. A lot of the stuff that I'm wearing myself is uh, gifted to me, and, and some of it was uh, uh, made, but all by either Apaches, Lipan Apaches, uh, a medicine bag, that uh, I never tell anybody what's in there. It's my medicine. Okay. Uh, and this is a, another bag, uh, beaded ba okay. bag that was gifted to me by another Lipan Apache. Also the um, uh, Texas Mountain Laurel Seeds uh, that we have here. Uh, they're also on, this is uh, the same symbols that we have on our flag with a yellow, which are very difficult to find the Mountain Laurel Seeds. Uh, also, there's a purple heart here. I had never, I've earned a purple heart, but I was given to this this purple heart uh, 
was given to me by a, one of our warriors who is actually serving right now in Iraq. He's actually just recently earned his fourth Purple Heart. He also flew our flag on May 19th uh, this year, which com to us it commemorated, even though after the May 18th raid, which is well documented uh, by Colonel McKenzie, uh, that on May 19th we're still here. And so we rode up uh, and got permission to fly our flag over uh, Camp Echo, our headquarters in, in Iraq. And he flew it proudly oh, and he sent us some pictures. Uh, so maybe next time we come, we'll, we'll show you. those pictures. Maybe we'll bring him with us because he's be supposed great. to be back by Christmas. Oh, that would be so nice. We look forward to having him back and, and uh, <coughs> uh, a real true warrior he is. Mm -hmm. Uh, he's been in, uh, he's also a combat photographer, so I'm assuming he'd bring a lot of photos with him. Uh, anyway, the last, some of the other things I have is, is a knife, and that uh, to me represents uh, that uh, our ancestors uh, never gave up, never surrendered, and to me, and to most people, obviously, it seems like uh, it's an offensive weapon, uh, but to me, it represents that. Our, my ancestors always uh, uh, put freedom of all the people at, at the foremost. Uh, so they, the, I, I wear it. I've worn it to schools. A lot of people don't like wearing stuff like that to schools. But nobody's asked me to, to, uh, to take it off. And, uh, um, but anyhow, that's what it represents to me. I made this as well. The, also the belt. I made it. There's some uh, round uh, uh, metal pieces on here. That represents uh, also the Apaches that would uh, be paid off or given, uh, traded for money, so, uh, pesos or U.S. dollars. To the Apache, that was something shiny that they could put on their belts as for decoration. So they would pound them and make them large, and that's what they used. Uh, and that's why the Apaches, you see a lot of them wearing mm -hmm. these uh, larger things. And that's to represent the silver dollars, what they did with the silver dollars and money. That's what use they got. Uh, there's also a Texas Ranger star here. Mm -hmm. uh, the Texas Rangers, obviously, uh, with our families, uh, there's five generations of Texas Rangers dating back to the very first Texas Rangers. Uh, even though they were Texas Rangers and at, at one time held a very close relationship with the Texas Rangers and the U.S. government, Everything turned on them when they wanted their land, mm -hmm. and uh, but still we hold that with high respect because they did it for a good cause for the for what they felt was right. And uh, so anyway, that's what that represents. You have the apron and the boots. They also yeah. have a breech cloth. It, uh, it it's here a lot of times in, in the Texas desert. Uh, they didn't wear any pants. I'm wearing pants mm -hmm. today just to be decent here, <laughs> but. Uh, uh, a breech cloth was all you needed to wear in the desert because it is extremely hot and humid. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also moccasins that I have on. I don't know if the camera can catch those. The moccasins uh, come up knee, knee high. There are also um, leggings that we can pull up higher, all the way up to waist high. In walking through the uh, uh, desert, everything in the desert pretty much has a thorn on it or is very stiff, bushy. Right. So th these are made out of buffalo hide. It's very difficult to pierce that through there, you know, if you got um, tripped or, or just walked through. And as I've said before, the Apache travel at night, try traveling at night through the desert with all the prickly wow. pear and, and uh, all that, the desert uh, environment there. And it's very difficult. So it makes sense that they would wear stuff like that. It's very cool. I've worn them in extreme hot temperature and it, it almost cool. feels like I'm not wearing anything. On the uh, last show, Anita, you were telling us about the camp dress. This is a camp dress? Yes, this is a camp dress and actually we did it almost to uh, look like my, uh, the grandmother called oh, uh, really? Juanita Castro. Mm -hmm. And it's, if I may stand up a little bit, it's a, a skirt all gathered and it's long, normally long. Uh, they ever wore, uh, drove a, a horse, it wouldn't matter. They were all covered. They were very discreet women and they covered the women all the way up to the to uh, the wrist, and the younger women would cover, would have their uh, their sleeves up to their uh, elbows, and uh, the belt was made out of buffalo also, and they would carry a pouch, and in the pouch, um, the modern time now is a lot of us use the scissors, but women used to carry their own knives in those days, and they would use it for their sage, they would use it for um, medicine, and. Uh, uh, 
this is part of our regalia. This is a, a camp dress. And some women didn't wear uh, a, a belt. It was just a long, long uh, skirt with a long blouse that went up to the knee. Mm. And this is our camp And your fan? Our fan was used, uh, used for many purposes. And um, we use it now for uh, when we're in the circle, when we're dancing. Um, we use it when uh, the beat of the drum goes up as a respect to our creator. We'll pick it up. Uh, we'll use it many times to cover our face from the sun. Uh, it has many purposes. We use it to bless. Uh, it's nothing uh, lightly to be handled. It's respected. Mm -hmm. And uh, we use it when we burn our sage and we blow the sage with it towards the person. To, we pray with sage and we pray with our fan. And this is a uh, fan that maybe Richard could explain the feathers. Well, it, it comes from the bird the that uh, travels in Texas. Mm -hmm. the, um, it, uh, it was also gifted to me. So to, to us, it has a lot of respect uh, in, in how we got it. And we must treat it with respect always. We use it for uh, all those things to, as she was saying, uh, burning sage and blessing ourselves and blessing other people. And also to indicate that, that wh when we speak, those words are traveling through the air. Uh, our Creator hears that, and uh, we need to remind ourselves that that is what's happening. Uh, sometimes uh, we forget that we, our words are lost in just after we have spoken them, but our words are actually traveling through the air. And, and, and if there's nobody around to hear us, if we're alone, the Creator's there with us, and uh, the spirits of our, our ancestors are around. I feel them. Uh, they're around me, and sometimes they're used to just to touch the, that spirits that, that come around us. Uh, we gently, uh, when we're uh, saging, uh, we, uh, we're feeling those, uh, those spirits that, that, that are around us. Uh, and that, that gentle breeze that, that is blowing across us, that is the presence of something, you know, the air. Um, anyway, that's, that's okay. what, uh, that is, uh, a lot of the reasons, and every, within every it's person, beautiful. there's a lot of other reasons, of course. Well, I know you're working on a lot of projects. You're researching or documenting elders from the community. And uh, can you just tell us a little bit about that? I know there's a lot more. We'll have to bring you back for the full story, yes. but if you could tell us a little bit about what you're doing well, in that area. We started out documenting some of the uh, elders uh, on doing a project for food uh, introductions. But because they had so much more than just the food, uh, it was incredible the, the stories that they, they've had. Personally, each one of them grew up in a lot of different time than we have in today's date with all the new technology and, and the modern era now. Even, even uh, 70, 80 years ago, some of, we interviewed um, one of my grand aunts, would be my mom's aunt, or my mom's sister-in-law, no, my grandmother's sister, uh, sister-in-law, I'm sorry. She's 104 years old. Oh, so she, wow. yes, she would remember a lot differently. Uh, a lot of things, you know, 100 years ago, uh, even 90 years ago, and the stories that her mom had passed to her. So a lot of those are, were still fresh in her mind. She sang several songs for us in four or five different verses. She still has a very good memory and very good mind. So those were really valuable to record and to pass them on to everybody else and Absolutely. their family as well. So are you videotaping? We videotape Good. everything. Uh, we stop just audio recording because there's so much more that you can capture, you know, on camera. Right. And, and, and plus, we've video recorded people that we've just come across. They're not Lipan Apache, but they know so much because they've grown in that area of uh, Southwest Texas. Mm -hmm. We've just happened on them. Uh, I can't say by accident because it, it's got to be some reason that we were placed in those locations that we would have never met some people that we've come across. It's just been unbelievable uh, what led us there. Uh, we went to, for instance, we went to a museum in, in uh, Brackettville, Texas to, uh, to just investigate and just to uh, look around and see what, what happened there. And we come across a, a Cherokee lady that was just unbelievable. Her, the stories that she had just were un, just incredible. But uh, so they've taken us in other paths too as well that we, you know, we had n never expected. That was wow. nice. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing <coughs> some of the work you've done and 
bring some of your guests on because you, I know you have so much more information for us. Well, thank, we, we look forward to be back here. Uh, we, we also participate in a lot of other functions uh, here, too. And you just Fresno. recently had a parade, a veterans parade? Yes, we, we were kind of drafted into organizing the Veterans Day Parade. <laughs> so what we did was sub submit a, a, a single entry for all the Native Americans in Central California. And we were able to pull for uh, a little over 400. Uh, wow. Uh, and uh, in about 13 different entries, floats, different things in one group. Uh, so that was the first year we've done it. So hopefully by next year, we'll, we'll grow much bigger. And we look forward to that. But we participate in a lot of other functions too, uh, powwows uh, around the Central Valley there around Fresno and then up here in the Bay Area mm -hmm. too as well. Oh, in Texas, and in Oklahoma, and wherever we go. You're always on the road, it yes. sounds like. The powwow road. The powwow highway, huh? Yes. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for being here. We really enjoyed having you. Um, I want to give a blessing out to Dr. Daryl Babe Wilson. He's going to be celebrating. His, well, he, he, by the time you see this, he's probably already celebrated his birthday. So happy birthday, Dr. Wilson. He recently moved here from Nevada. And so we're really happy to have him in our community. So. We look forward to spending some time with him. And what are your plans for the holidays? Well, we're going to go to our uh, cousin's house and, and uh, celebrate there. So, uh, is that in Texas or is that in no, Fresno? That's, well, that's in, in, in Sanger, which is near Fresno. Oh, okay. I know and then Sanger, right after that, that, we're headed to Texas. Ah, yeah. okay. So, so there's a lot of people from Texas and Sanger. It, well, it's I have a compadre from Eagle Pass, Texas, and he lives in Sanger. Yeah. <laughs> well, not Sanger. His relatives live in Sanger. He lives right there in Fresno. So Here in San Jose, too. Yes. In, in San Jose, there used to be the Del Rio Bar and the Lone Star Bar. That club. Those are Del Rio all club from uh, and uh, Eagle, Pass Eagle Pass in Del Rio, Texas. Yes. Yeah. I guess there's no one left in Texas. No, they're all here. They're all in California. <laughs> yeah. And that's why, that's why we feel it's important to, to pass all this this knowledge onto them. It too, certainly well. is. And it's wonderful that you're going into the schools to do that. I know we had your number up there. So hopefully, you know, if people need to contact you or they can contact you through Native Voice TV. So well, sure. thank sure. you for joining thank us. Thank you. And it's wonderful thank to have you here. Thank you. And thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week, Native Voice TV. Good evening. <laughs>